Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why you might not be getting the results on the field. So you might not be getting stronger, fitter, and faster. You know, you might not be losing uh, the fat you wanted. And yeah, so it's going to be a real simple video. Okay, so what are the main reasons that people don't get the results on the field? And you might be training and just not getting the results. Okay, if that's you, then this is for you. And please, if you like this, share this with your friends give it a like, um, hit on the like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let's get into this. So obviously if you're a rugby player, um, it makes sense to be stronger, fitter and faster on the field, right? Because that's going to give you an advantage. That's going to help you play. That's going to complement your skill base. So your passing, your tackling, um, your running of the ball. It's going to complement all of those. So what about if you're a person and you know you you're training and like you just just feel like you know your training is making you tight or yeah you, you keep constantly getting injuries what could be possibly going on well you know i've been now doing this for 15 years i started in the gym um and like all i've wanted to know is like how can i get the most return on my investment Okay, and my investment being my time in the gym. Okay, and then everything else I'm doing comes around that. Okay, so how can I get the most out of my exercises so that I can do the least work but get the most results? Okay, because that's what we all want, isn't it? Like we want to get the best results, um, but we also don't want to spend every second of the day having to work out or you know doing all these extras for like what? You know, because that's what the most successful people do. Like. The most successful people, like they get the best results without having to do the most work or like they, maybe they are doing the most work, but they're also doing the best work. Okay. And it's, it's all about um, that return on the investment. And you could like, you could turn that into money, um, but whatever, whatever it may be, like it's how you should be looking at it. If you're looking at your studies, right? If you're studying and, you know, there might be one way that you're studying and you're just not remembering anything, but you know, there could be a better way to do it so that you actually remember more. And that's what I'm all about. And so that's what I found in the gym. Okay. And so if, if it is, if that is you, maybe you need to look at your programming. Okay. Maybe you need to look at your exercise selection. All right. And then you need to look at, you know, your recovery from that. Okay. So there's a few things that you need to look at. So let, let's look at your programming for one. Okay. So like what exercises are you selecting to actually, um, you know, get the growth that you want and get the strength in the field? Now, you always hear me talk about high bar back squats, okay? And one of the reasons is I, I personally like to program high bar back squats with depth, right? Like, so full depth, you, you watch my videos, I'll put one up. Um, then you, what you'll see is um, a, a lot of people won't squat like that, okay? And a lot of people will squat like power lifters. Why? Okay, why is that? Why do I think that is? Well, obviously, like people want to impress people, right? Like we, we, we're, we're built that way. We like to impress other people. Okay. So if you have a bigger squat number, it's obviously like, oh, yeah. If you have a big squat number, cool. Like that's really cool. Like that, 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 that means that you should be, you know, way better on the field. You, know, you have, should have more power. Okay. So how to get a big squat numbers, you should do a low bar back squat. Okay. But what is the low bar back squat training? All right, so it's it's more glutes and hamstrings. Okay, it is quads, but nowhere near as much as a high bar back squat. And if I go and have a look at some of the best ball runners of all time, Jonah Lomu, um, just for one, um, you know, Adi Savia, these guys have huge quads as well as glutes. Okay, and so yes, you could just single out quads and training quads, but why wouldn't you want to? actually grow your quads and your glutes evenly um well not exactly evenly but evenly at the same time so that you know you're getting best of both worlds all right and that is actually why i test the high bar or a front squat because that's going to show me how strong your quads are too whereas if someone's going to do a low bar it's actually going to get away from that and what you actually see in a lot of rugby training programs especially like um <clears throat> Just, just, just in general, you see, you see a lot of box spots being used because the people think it's safer. Um, but like, it's hamstrings, it's hamstrings and glutes. Like, we're we're missing the quads. We're missing one massive aspect. So why would I want to test that? And like, there's nothing wrong with box squats, um, and they can be quite a good tool to get someone come back from an injury. But 
you know, like if you're if you're training that way, what do you expect to happen? Like, do you expect to be to be able to run like a rugby player, or do you expect that you know you're going to be more like a power lifter, right? And like, uh, box squats actually got made big by Louis Simmons. If you don't know uh, Louis Simmons is, look at look him up and look up Westside Barbell. But like, he had a massive influence on the industry because he found that he could get his squat up, which is his low bar, right, up from getting his his um his box squat up. Right, because it's essentially it's like a, it's it's pretty much a pause squat where you take a, um, a whole lot of the load off and then you're coming back up off that. Now, so because of that, like you know, you can lift up more weight, yada yada yada, um, and you know, coaches clung on to that because you know they're getting the weights up and then they're, they're lifting big weights, so it must be good, right? But then we're missing like a massive muscle group, and when we're just missing this whole load of stuff. Uh, what do you find of powerlifters too? They you often got like really bad hips, and like they didn't they they didn't push their weights into uh, into full ranges of motion, right? And when you do that, we can get obviously more flexible, but we can build the muscle in those areas, so we can also build up weak links. So like I find, um, you know, it really means that the hips don't have to get into um, full flexion. Um, there's a whole lot going on there. And if we're actually training a high bar with full depth, we're training that at the same time. So your hips should actually be feeling better from doing a high bar. So that's just one example of training, all right, um, that you might be doing. The other, there's the other things to do it too. Um, I think people find if they're training is that they, they keep doing the same thing. They keep doing either the same program, same sets and reps, and they fall behind. Like you, you stop the growth. Your body adapts, all right? Your body is an adapt uh, adaptation machine. All right. And after about three, three, four weeks of doing an exercise or doing a certain set and rep pattern tempo, your body will be pretty much fully adapted. Okay. Because most of it is the mind controlling the muscles. Okay. And once that starts to um, fully adapt, like you won't get too much more growth. And so what if you want to put on size? Okay. Well, a lot of people just don't get enough volume in. All right. So they don't actually get enough um, work in or they're not doing it with enough intensity, okay? So that means like the muscles need to be trained with a certain amount of load for them actually to need to grow because like you, you need, they need to have the stimulus to be able to force them to grow, all right? And that's the other thing. And, and like, that's why you get a program. Like a hundred dollars a month isn't, a month isn't much to get a program, okay? And if it is, then I would say, go and find a way to find a hundred dollars a month. Like everyone can do it. Everyone can do it. I can, I believe in everybody. I believe in everyone's uh, power to be creative enough to go and, you know, be able to do that. Anyway, let's move on from that. So, okay. So say you're training really well then. All right. Let's just say training has been really good. What else could it be? Well, if you haven't looked at your nutrition, all right, if you actually haven't tracked how much you're eating over a week, okay, two weeks, right, then that's where you need to go to next. It's like, okay, well, because like, that's probably the next biggest factor because like, um, you know, if you have a good training program, you should get results anyway. Like you should get stronger um, unless you're eating absolutely nothing. But like most people are eating, uh, are eating enough, right? Anyway, if you, if you get like a two week, um, if you track what you're eating for two weeks and you average it out, okay, am I eating enough protein, right? And then that's your number one, okay? So that's, that's what uh, your protein is going to turn into your amino acids and that's going to fuel your growth. Okay, but then you got to be like, okay, do I need to lose weight with this? Um, am I trying to lose fat? What am I trying to do? All right, then you can work out your fats and your carbohydrates. Um, and yeah, like they're, they're, they're your two big things, like training and nutrition. And the third one is sleep. Now I've got my best results ever when I sleep um, and I sleep well. Okay, and like I'm talking eight hours. And I've done so much to actually like research and try it on myself like different sleeping tools to help me sleep better. And nothing's helped more than actually just making my room cold. So if my room's cold, I actually sleep so much better. And what I found, so I, I traveled to Australia for eight months um, by myself. And like, it was so easy for me to lose fat when I was sleeping like eight, nine hours. It's crazy. Like it was insane. How easy, like 
I, I just maintained like a lean body and I was eating man. Like I was, I was eating about 4,000 calories and like, I was super lean. It was crazy. And like strong too. I was waking up and I felt fresh. I felt good. I could train. And like, I was just training most days just because like I needed something to keep my mind like focused on something. Otherwise I, I would have gone insane. Um, but yeah, so if you, if you haven't, if you can't get that piece, um, like maybe you have a small child or something like that's always going to hamper it and you need to find a way to get as much sleep as you can. Okay. Like, and you know, nothing's going to be perfect. Nothing is, no, no one's perfect, but you need to think about that and be like, okay, well, how can I get extra sleep? Maybe you need a nap. Maybe you need to get some 20, 30 minute naps in. Um, I usually, if, if, if I find like, because I get up at five every day that now I'm not traveling on the road, um, it's like if I go to bed too late, well, then, then the next day I, I usually try and have a quick nap, whether it be 20, 30 minutes. And that, that adds up over the week. Um, you know, I'll use my acupuncture mat. If you've ever seen those little mats with spikes on it, they're really good for that. Um, yeah. If, if, if you can just do those three things, right? Like you should be getting stronger, fitter, and faster. All right. And if you're not getting, if you're not getting those things, then, you know, maybe you need to change the training. Maybe you need to change your diet. Uh, your best think about yourself right like we want to get the most bang for your buck all right so you don't want to be training and then not getting the results you want to be training and getting the best results okay so think about that all right and if you need help with it please reach out to me you can message me on instagram and i'll get back to you cool